what happens to you while you're busy making other plans, which is a line I borrowed from John Lennon. But if I hadn't broken my arm, I wouldn't have really started painting in earnest. It changed the way I feel about people and about people helping people. I lived in and out of hospital for almost a year. So that taught me a lot about how one person can make a difference to a person's life, how one therapist really helped me come out of the depression I was in when that happened to me and the pain. So all these things, no matter what you do, even being a hairdresser and a potter have all helped to, to make me into the painter I am. Because I understand when I do a painting and I create a pot in a painting, then I know what shape that pot should be because I've been a potter. So, and I understand about curves and lines because I was a hairdresser and that's all part of this training. So I think because, and at one point I did teach cooking for a couple of years. So I think all these things certainly have made me the person I am. There's no doubt about it. You can't have experience without having mileage. No matter how good you are, the years put a patina on your life which make it interesting. Would you say there's hope for anybody who really truly has a passion about something? Absolutely. I think if you really, really are passionate about anything, you'll make it. But that passion has to be real. That passion has to be true. Um, you know, it's funny because I have uh, two granddaughters, 19 and 16, and they both were on stage for a lot of years. And I remember my eldest granddaughter used to you know, do the steps really well, but she, she didn't have a passion. I used to say to her, where's the passion? Where's the passion? Whereas my youngest granddaughter, when she got out on that stage, she just lit up the stage. So there has to be that you can't fool yourself. If you're not that passionate about what you're doing, get out, do something else. Is there anyone, any artists? Um, you know, people are always asking me, do I teach? Um, and at this point in my life, I don't. But when I do teach, it's going, to te it's going to be about the emotions of art. There's so many teachers who speak about the technical part of a painting. But I don't think people get enough input on, on what it's really like to feel like you're a part of a painting. Someone who's a professional like myself who can give them an insight into letting go, into painting to music, into putting some fire under themselves, not just to worry about, you know, putting a wash in of the sky and, you know, this kind of thing. So I do look forward at some point to, to teaching. Um, and especially young people, your age, Chris, uh, I think, who are ready to really learn. Uh, I don't want to be teaching people who are not interested. I want to be teaching people who really care about art, you know. And, of course, it really seems like you're really passionate about what you do. And would you, could you see yourself doing anything else but painting? Oh, of course. Who knows? <laughs> I was a dancer. I was a film extra. I mean, I've done so many things in my life. And I think the reason that I, I've done them all well is because I'm such a passionate person. I can't do anything halfway. And that's what drives me crazy with, with so many people and so many young people who seem to have lost their way. It's, you know, don't wait for the world to come to you. Don't wait for something to happen in your life. You have to make it happen. It, it's not instant. Everything, you see, that's the problem now is everything is so instant. You've got to have it now, you know, and it, there's not enough. I feel there's suddenly too much technical knowledge between young people, you know, we're talking on a cell phone, we're talking on a, on a computer, we're MSMing, we're eye chatting. Like, are we sitting with each other, talking to each other? I think that, you get me on a whole other subject now, but I think this is all part of the passion. I'm passionate about life. He'll tell you he's boring, but, you know, because one of us has to be sane, you know. <laughs> but at this point in time, I feel, what's the point of doing something if you just if you don't have a deep love and passion for it. What's the point? Now you're saying that you've done a lot of things and you're passionate about a lot of things and it seems like you've, you know, you go from one thing to another, dancing, pottery, acting, like, but why is painting, like, why is this the one that you feel like 
you're going to stick to. Right. Well, maybe it's the time of my life. Uh, maybe it's because I've done a lot of things. And this is without a doubt, although I was passionate about dancing, but then um, as time went by, my knees, you know, didn't allow me to do what I always did. So the reality of that's a physical challenge. With painting, I can, I can be Grandma Moses. Like, this is something I can do forever. Um, and this is something also that has set me apart from a lot of people. It's because when I see the joy in people's work, uh, people's faces when they look at my paintings, it's pretty special. I've seen grown men cry in here. They've become so emotional about looking at one of my paintings. I mean, that is humbling. It's amazing. And sad to say, I wouldn't be accepted into a lot of art galleries because my work is too pretty. It's too nice. And if you go into a lot of galleries, there's so much abstract work, there's so much miserable <coughs> work, there's so much work about, well, what do you see in this painting? What is it, you know, you have to really think, well, what, what on earth is that? Like, and, you know, it's almost that you have to be controversial in order to, to get media hype, which is interesting in a lot of things, too. And yet, in general, the public loves things they can relate to, nice things, pretty things, lovely things. It doesn't always have to be controversial. But um, luckily for me, as I say, I, I have my own art gallery, so I can just do whatever I like. Do you think, do you believe that you, like your, it seems like your kids are very artistic too, music. And yes. Your, your daughter does fashion, right? Yes. Uh, do you think, do you believe you've mostly influenced them into that, or? I think my children grew up in a, in a very entrepreneurial, creative home. Both my husband and myself are very creative people. My husband was in advertising. He had the first boutique ad agency in Toronto. He was the first renovator of Cabbage Town in Toronto. He was the one tearing apart downtown when no one wanted to live there. I mean, we've always, both of us, been ahead of our game. I was the first, when I came from England in 1962, I was, I was the first woman cutting men's hair in Toronto. That had never been done before. You always went to a barber's to have a haircut. And I came from London and, and opened a salon, and it was like unisex, and no one had ever done that. So I don't know. I just, I, I've always thought outside the box. And I'm one of those people that I can always find a way to do something. And this is what drives me mad when people make excuses about, oh, well, you know, you weren't there, or I couldn't find your number, or oh, well, they were closed that day, or, you know, if I decide to do something or find something or someone, don't get in my way because I will get to my goal. And this is the thing. You have to, I've always set goals that are way ahead of what I'm thinking. I've always, I'm one of those people that tell people before something happens, whereas some people might say, well, I don't want to say anything in case it doesn't happen. Well, I tell everyone what's on my mind because then I have to make it happen. So it's interesting when you set your own goals like that. This is a pretty vast question and I know it's hard to answer, but what is art to you? Art to me is an expression of my life, of my journey, of my feelings, of my passions, of my family. It's just a wonderful way of expressing my emotions.